Hello to my beautiful family of light. My name is Claudia and I'm happy to have you here. I say family of light because this channel is all about you, me, everyone being way more than we think we are. And so if you want to stick around and explore that a little further with me, I'm happy to have you join me. I'm doing a series of videos. I have a uh, over a hundred videos out there already covering all kinds of different topics. This is a little series of videos that sh demonstrates through my life how I came to, how spirit brought me to, a place of awakening the spirit within and what that looks like, how it meant, uh, and what I went through. And I believe it's going to be very similar for almost all of you. And so you've got your own stories. So you have to look behind the story to find out what the nudging was that we need to pay attention to. And I'm going to help point those out along the way for you. So in the last video, um, which was number 22, my mother was in the hospital, had a surgery and had gone into a coma. And I had told her at that time I would know when to come. And she replied that she was counting on that. So there was that in, a, in and of itself between the two of us was, uh, it sort of leads to uh, an understanding of some kind that you have a pact already. And um, so that was kind of one of the first clues. In fact, it sort of stumped me when it came out that way. And I thought, isn't that interesting? You don't know what else to think about it, right? So um, the time, because she had had a uh, living will, she did not want, if she did not come out of surgery or she did not come out of a coma or whatever was going on, she did not want to be on life support indefinitely. She made that very clear, signed papers that made uh, the state aware of it as and the doctors and her, her um, you know, family was aware of it. And so at least the hospital had made us aware of it at the time that uh, she went into the coma. So that's where we're at. I am uh, three weeks, uh, let's see, I'm at the point where I'm being notified of the coma. They don't know why. The surgery was completely successful. And I had a vision from her um, that night after I had found out about the surgery being successful. She came to me in a meditation that I have as as if you and I were sitting here chatting like this. She was whole, healthy, vibrant, just stunningly beautiful, radiant even, um, and told me she wasn't coming back. And it was the second time I said to her that it was okay. She needed to go do what she needed to do and that I would know when to come. So that's where we are. Uh, the boys, my brothers, are keeping me posted on what's going on with her uh, during this period of time because at some point uh, they're going to pull all uh, food from her uh, because she's not coming out of the coma. Once they withdraw food, you have um, a, a period of time that isn't indefinite. They, at some point, they sh they had set it up bef ahead of time that she would, uh, they would stop the liquids. And once they stop the liquids, then there's only a few days before death occurs and renal, renal failure sets in and the body can't live without the water. So that's where we're at. I'm waiting for that time. I'm staying uh, out of state where I live and allowing the boys to, to be in attendance to her, uh, you know, her com com comatose body. So, okay, that's we, where we are. I now have um, a day where I hear that they're going to withdraw, uh, in a few days, they're going to withdraw water. And I know that then I need to get, a, I need to get a ticket within an amount of time to go out so that I'm there for her passage. So I go, I get up and I go to work on this Tuesday uh, morning. It was, I think i had had the news uh, over the weekend uh, that they were going to stop liquids on Wednesday. 
And so I go to Tuesday, I go to work and I am antsy. I'm like a, a cat on a hot tin roof. My, my mind will not allow me to focus on anything. Uh, and my body is agitated. Inside, it's like a volcano. Everything is churning. And so I go home at lunch, uh, and I'm standing at the door. And as I stand at the door, I witness, I'm witness to myself um, going over to the drawer, calling, calling uh, to the phone, calling the uh, air and airlines and getting a ticket to home back to to Washington State and for that afternoon not knowing why exactly this is I'm watching the body is standing in the door the physical part of me but I, I watch this uh it reads the ether I'm not sure what's what anyhow I'm watching it so I hang up the phone I go start checking around the house what needs to be done I pack a bag I uh, leave and secure the place. I go to the post office. I go to the office, clean off my desk, tell them what needs to be done, go to the, the bank, and off I go. And it's just a whirlwind. I haven't a clue, and I'm not myself. I'm not integrated. And so uh, once in the air, I go to Denver, and Denver, I don't even remember going through the airport there, but once in the air to Seattle, I begin to become more myself. I can feel I'm uh, integrating. It's almost like the fragments are coming together. I really don't know how to describe it. And I'm looking out the window. It's clouds and blue sky above it. And and I, I'm saying to God, I'm, what have I done? <laughs> you know, have I done the right thing? This is like, you know, there's no logic in this. I had no, they wanted to know if, if uh, why I was leaving. I said, I said, because I'm needed back there. That's all I said. It, I had no call from anybody saying now's the time to come. I just knew something inside of me knew it was time to go. And so uh, as I'm looking out and asking that question, I see my mother sitting on a cloud. She's that vibrant, beautiful, my mother was such a pretty woman. Um, and her legs are dangling. <laughs> She's like on a swing. And and I hear God say, Joni, you have to go finish this. And she acknowledges it and she's like this and off the cloud she goes and I know she's headed back to her body. How I know that, I don't know, but the inner part of me knows what's going on. And, uh, and then I feel this arms around me. And, uh, and God said, yes, you've made the right decision. She's going to need you now. And that with that and, and those arms and this energy of unconditional, absolute love, it permeates every cell, atom, fiber, every, every aspect of your being and peace came over me. And I was, there's no doubt no fear, nothing. It's you are doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing. And that was that. I, ma I made the flight, was met by two brothers at the airport, one who'd flown in from New York, the other who lived in the area, and we they took me to the hospital where mom was uh, in her comatose state. There, there were two more uh, brothers, a family, a large family of, of boys, <laughs> mostly. And um, so, you know, we all had our greetings and of course, the dark circles and the, and the sadness of what was imminent was apparent. And there's a little stress that goes along with that. And, uh, and you know, you meet, you meet those things the way you need to. And because I was in such a solid state of knowing, absolute knowing, I was just filled, filled with compassion. And, um, and so it, I, I found out that the boys had set up a, um, a, a, a chain, right? To always, always somebody with her. And I had, a. Uh, five living brothers at the time out of six. And uh, so they were, you know, they were taking turns so that 
they could have a day off and somebody would come in and replace them and then it would be a few days and somebody else would come back. Um, I felt, you know, really solid about what was going on. Um, and it's, it's really in, I, you know, I don't have words. I have, I'm having to refer to my notes lest I fall apart, <laughs> you know, because once all that's done, I'm solid <laughs> as uh, the rock of Gibraltar while all this is going on because I've had that confirmation from <laughs> the, my source. And, um, but, uh, once once you've had that and you're integrated and everything is said and done, you're left with all kinds of things. And it was a long time before I was able to cry because the the joy of what's there's more coming, more to come, and so all of that uh, you know stays with you forever. It's like amazing how nothing ever changes. The story just doesn't change. But um, when I when I got there, I said, well. I asked the nurse, could I stay in the room? So they set it up so that I could have a cot and a, uh, blankets and stuff. And that me meant that the boys could all go back to their families and have uh, some routine time with their kids, uh, wives and children. So um, that that night, after everybody had gone, I went over to, to the bed I laid down beside mom, cradled her as best I could, getting my arms in there. And um, and I, for the second or third time since I'd gotten into the room, said to her, I'm here. I'm here and I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm here to see you through this. And, um, and it was kind of amazing. I mean, it was more than amazing. The, the, feeling of, you know, holding her hand and feeling warmth, no strength, but warmth in a body that was in a coma was surprised me. Um, that night I told stories. I laid there and held her and we talked a lot about um, what a wonderful mother she was to me. Uh, not everybody got along with her well, really well. She was very uh, specific about her life, stoic and, 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 uh, old fashioned and, you know, with, with a big family warmth and whatnot. It, it just, she had, she had some difficulties and I, I was one of the ones that, um, made it okay for her. Uh, but I, we told stories. She loved her grandson, my son, especially, and they got along amazing. And I, I remember the time that she took his army guys, little, you know, little army men, took her hankies and some string and rocks and sticks, and she tossed army men and that little guy with his toddler legs running after those squealing with delight and my mother just over the moon with happiness, right? It was a pretty special, special time. So, so the next day I get up, uh, six, probably five thirty, six. just get cleaned up. It's Wednesday morning now. We have a meeting with the doctors a little bit later. We know what's coming uh, so, and so they can update us. And I, I go over and get a washcloth and I'm wiping down mom's face. And all of a sudden the energy in the room begins to shift and it is intense. I mean, it's amazing what's going on. The hair on the, on every part of my body is standing on end. And, um, my mother opens her eyes and she, the tears are streaming down and she can't speak, but she's, we're looking at each other in amazement, awe and wonder. And, uh, for, for whatever reason, she comes out of her coma in which there had been less than one, right around 1% brain function. I mean, we're talking barely alive. Mom comes back to life. And what's interesting is one of the brothers, uh, the second youngest, had so much trouble. And the only thing, the only thing he wanted was for her to wake up so that she, so that he could 
love her into making a different decision and sticking around for a while. And here she is. Those bright, mom had the brightest blue eyes. It was just fabulous. Anyhow, that's where I'm gonna leave you for today. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this uh, in sequential days, which is a little unusual, but if you'll subscribe, it'll ensure that you get the uh, all of the video videos that I've done uh, as I keep going through this. This is 1992 now, 1992, which makes me 41, and I'm 70 in my 73rd year. We got a little ways to go yet. So, anyhow, we're gonna stop there. Isn't that intriguing? And we're gonna pick up with um, then you know what what happens then at, at, throughout that day and into her passage. So thank you so much. And there's pretty intriguing stuff yet to come. God is not done with me yet, I'm telling you. Okay, I love you so much. Please like and subscribe. It is the thing that helps this information grow. And one of the things, if you're listening to the story, you're listening behind it also. The thing that you find out is that when you're listening to source, and you're following, then there's no fear. There's no uh, question. It's when we're in our rational minds that we question everything. When you're dealing with that active spirit within you that is connected with our Creator, there is no doubt. Only peace, love, love beyond your imagining, and joy. So, I want you to know I love you this much. These arms go all the way around you and give you the greatest, warmest hug. I hope you can feel that energy within you, um, that you're receiving that and knowing that love is alive and well in your life. And um, uh, the next video will be sequential to this. We're gonna keep going until we get through this period of what's, what's happening to waken me to the spirit within. And then from there on, it's what I do with it, right? So thank you for joining me. Until the next time, be well, stay safe, be happy, and beyond anything else, know that you are uh, way more than you think you are. And I'm here to promise you that. Till the next time, bye. I'll see you in the next video.